Hey everybody and welcome back. Um, today I'm going to show you how to paint a stormtrooper and specifically this is a stormtrooper from uh, Star Wars Imperial Assault from Fantasy Flight Games. So uh, as you might imagine stormtroopers are fairly straightforward um, but if you are relatively new to painting you might just think well great yeah you need white and you need black and call it done but that is not true um when i do something when i'm going to paint a model that is going to be primarily white i rarely actually use any white at all and the reason is uh once you hit white you can't highlight any further you're, you're already as bright as you can be so um i generally save pure white for the brightest highlights if I use it at all. What I am going to be using today is primarily these three colors uh, and these are all um, game air colors so I've got uh, um, game air model air from Vallejo or Vallejo and uh, I've got wolf gray I've got somber gray and I have black I also have a little white sitting around here for highlighting later. But what I've done so far is I've cleaned up the model and I have coated it in uh, wolf gray. Actually, I have two of these. Now let's pick which one I'm going to do. I'm going to do this one. Um, and that is essentially my primer coat and my base coat all in one. Um, the, uh, the material these are made out of is kind of vinyl and uh, normally I would use a Vallejo surface primer to prime the model but the surface primers are a um, I can't remember what what they're composition is but it interacts poorly with this kind of material um, so I experimented earlier with just applying paint directly onto the material and it is it goes on it doesn't remain sticky and it doesn't rub off so I decided that I was just going to go ahead and apply it directly so that was applied with an airbrush. You could do this with a brush. Um, and I'm probably going to go back with a brush and do a little touch up because I seem to have gotten something on there. All right. Uh, now that I've got the base coat on, uh, my first thing is going to be to do a, a wash. It's really, it, it's kind of a, it's serving two purposes. Uh, this is going to be a glaze that will kind of bring down the um, the the brightness overall of the wolf gray, but it's also going to collect in the recesses and do uh, what is sometimes referred to as a pin wash but a pin wash is usually uh, more focused on a like a specific uh, panel line or something and this is going to be more of an overall so this is a uh, roughly a 50 50 mix of uh, liquitex airbrush medium and the somber gray And I'm going to apply this pretty uniformly over the model. And I don't want it to build up too heavily uh, outside of the um, deep recesses. So I'm going to be spreading it out as I go so that I don't get too much in the way of... Uh, kind of a chunky buildup on the on the wolf gray surface and then we'll just let it flow and get the recesses otherwise and this is harder to do when I'm 
when I'm shooting. And I could have mixed this a little bit more transparent. This is actually going to be darker than I want it to be. So I'm going to just add a touch of water to break that up. I like using the uh, the medium as opposed to water for these washes because it uh, usually provides a more even spread. Um, and the, the pigment tends to find its way into the recesses better. Okay, uh, with that part done, I'm going to go ahead and let this dry out, and uh, we'll hit the next step when, I'm, when that happens. All right, now that the uh, somber gray is dry, I'm going to go and do all of the black bits, and that is the, the jumpsuit and the gloves, the eyes, um, and the gun and as with most of the things I'm going to do from now on this is going to be a uh, translucent black uh, for me this is, means a mix 50-50 of Liquitex airbrush medium and uh, Vallejo model air black but the the trick is just to make sure that it's it's dark enough to cover some um, but thin enough that it's still sort of leaving some of the uh, underneath color, the, the light gray, to come through. And this is especially good on the on the gun because it'll provide some natural highlights that look quite nice. And when we're done, it'll look like this. So the next step then is to kind of smooth out, smooth out the armor color. Um, this means again a translucent translucent layer uh, and this time it's going to be of the wolf gray and I'm just going to be going right back over um, most of the white not all of it I want to leave some of it on there because again this is my shadow color so it's absolutely going to stay in the deepest recesses uh, where segments of of armor and armor detail uh, come together. Um, you know, I'll leave. I want to leave some in the lower portions, the shadowed areas of of the armor. But otherwise, I really kind of want to smooth it out a little bit, um, or really, it, I want to say as much as I can. But no, I don't really want to do it as much as I can. I want to leave some modeling to the color. I don't want it to be completely flat. Uh, so that is one of the reasons I approach it this way is that um, by building up that translucent layer over the armor here I will end up with uh, uh, 
I will end up with something that is, has a little bit more life to it. So I'm just going to Generally mix this stuff up on the fly. That way if it seems like I have, if it's too translucent I can add a little paint. If it's not translucent enough I can add a little bit more medium. Let's see if you look there. That doesn't look too bad. And I'll start out on the top of his head because I know that I want that to be pretty, pretty smooth. So I'm just going to dab it in. I'm going to spread it around. And make it nice. Uh, there's these little recesses in his helmet. Um, one on each sort of temple and then uh, two in the back here and those two recesses let's see yeah those recesses are actually um very close to the somber gray color in real life so leaving those with that color in there is good also you might even want to just drop in a little bit more if it's not quite dark enough Okay, well, I'm going to come back to the helmet. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and do all of the rest of this off camera, and then I'll bring it back. Actually, here's another tip. The, um, <clears throat> there's these lines on the legs. These, uh, I'm not even sure what you would call those, but they stand out. And you definitely want those to to be smooth and white-ish. Uh, I also like to just highlight the helmet. There's these three uh, okay there's these three uh, sort of humped areas on the face plate of the helmet right at the nose and then uh, at the cheek areas and I, I wanted to get those uh, pulled out as well. Here, let's look at look at my finished piece. You can kind of see how how they sort of pop on there. Okay, and so with that done, <clears throat> the last thing you might want to do is mix the. Uh, the wolf gray with little white and, and go in and do some final highlights like maybe uh, on the knees maybe that nose um, his utility belt is a good place for that and that's where I did it um, and the that similar texture on the knee and when you're all done you have a really nice looking stormtrooper and the nice thing is, is that uh, he looks white, right? I mean, that doesn't look that doesn't look gray, but really he's gray. Um, but to the eye, he's white. But it's a white that has a lot more visual interest than just painting him white and black. And the other thing you can do is another final thing, and I haven't done it on this, but um, I'm considering it, and that's just adding some little bit of metallic. Uh, highlights. I probably used Lead Belcher, Citadel Lead Belcher on that, um, to pick out some of the details on the gun to give it a little, um, to give it a little wear. But that's that's not a hundred percent necessary. It looks pretty good as is. But that's it, and real simple, real straightforward, and I think a lot more interesting than. Uh, straight up black and white stormtrooper and that is it for now and thank you for watching